everybody, Sam again. I'm back with another How I Organise video. So this is how I organise my stamps and dies. So these three shelves are dedicated all to my stamps. Now I don't keep any of my stamps in any of the original packaging. I've done that before in the year, over the years and I used to have them in dedicated cases. Every, every, pretty much every brand has their own die and stamp storage cases and I had them. Um, some of them are quite pricey but I did like them and they're great for, a, for me, they were great for a certain amount of time and then once my collection started to evolve I just had stuff all over the place and as soon as I started stripping all the packaging off of everything it made a massive difference. I like now that I can grab one of these tubs and that for example flowers and nature. So there's flowers and nature and I've got a new home a little bit at the back there. That is every flower <laughs> and tree um, scene die um, stamp that I have. It's in that section, that's it. I don't have to go rooting through other cupboards or pulling out other kind of cases and stuff. That is everything. Now, if they have a coordinating die set, I do keep the die set in with this as well, because I figure you're gonna want the die if you're using the stamp. If you keep the die separate, then I think sometimes I would, I'd forget, and I'd end up fussy cutting it, or <laughs> just, yeah, like finding another way to cut it. But anyway, I just like that. I can just take that over onto my desk and sit there and just flick through and feel inspired. So what I will do in the description box of this video is I will list all of the categories that I use. So for example this one here I've got planning, children, travel, love, babies and Halloween. Really random order but it's there and then at the back you'll see these are just some stamping up red rubber that I, I like and I don't want to get rid of but I purchased this very thick perspex and they all stick onto the perspex and I just keep them at the back there. Again, I can see them, you know, they're all very visible. I guess I could probably break them down into the categories as well, because there's a few floral ones there, for example. The tubs that I purchased from Amazon, you get five for 12 99 I think it was. These ones, not only do they fit all of the pockets that I have perfectly, but they also fit the four of them really nicely on each of these shelves. It's the Billy shelf from Ikea. What I'll do is I'll take a photo and I'll pop it in the video so you can just see it, you know, in all three shelves rather than just through the video like this. The pockets that I use are, again, from Amazon. They're just clear pockets and then I label all of them with my labeler machine. Again, I'll list all of that stuff in the description box below. And I'll also link another video that I have where I actually show you, you know, how I store my stamps and I do the labeling and everything. I won't be doing that today. This is really just to do these little focus videos on just one area of my craft room. It seems to be helping a lot of people. I also just put a sheet of copy paper in there as well just so I can see the stamps really nicely against that. This tub here is my Mater Surprise basket. I just need to pop a label on that one but that's all the stamps and any coordinating dies for my own collection. I've also got some embossing folders up here. They're not really stored in any kind of fancy way. I will end up doing something better with them. I do label them, you can see there some of them are labelled but they fit really nicely in that one. So if I do end up getting, well I will, I'll end up getting more stamps, I can transfer this one into stamps as well. But this is the only area I'll ever give for my stamps, so when it does start to get full, that then is my time to kind of look through it. My mum will come and have a nose and end up taking some anyway, but I will also donate and sell some. People will still buy it, you know, without the original packaging on eBay and other kind of selling sites. These dividers that I use here is just sheets of copy paper laminated and I'll give you the measurements of those in the description box below. But it's just really straightforward. I did have multicoloured ones, I didn't like it, but I think what I will end up doing is I'm gonna change this to some bright pink, maybe. Yeah, it could definitely have a bit of colour here, I think. So I'm just gonna spin the camera around and show you my dies. Okay, so these are the three tubs that I have for my dies, along with these two taller A4 files for me to pop my bigger dies so you see here I've got for example there is a simply made crafts hexagon clutch bag and it's on the larger sheets so that's where I keep all of those. The magnetic sheets that I like to use are the 0.75 mil and then I usually stick them onto a piece of 300 GSM cardstock. 
that way I find that they're really strong and it keeps the price kind of reasonable because as soon as you start going thicker with the magnetic sheets past that 0.75 mil I find the price is just absolutely rocket. You can go obviously lower so like the 0.5 and so on but that is very flimsy it's more magnets for making you know them on your fridge and more DIY kind of things but again you, if you put that on like a grey board which some people do but if you start using a lot of grey board again it's going to start ending up quite expensive really so again this is just the one that I chose to use and it's how I you know and I enjoy this setup again got all my categories there under the sea kinetic cards scene building and then buildings and objects I've got butterflies Christmas Christmas is actually very small hobbies romance and yeah romantic love dies children and babies this is probably the one that I go to the most. I've got circles, squares, ovals, rectangles, and then I've got words, numbers, alphabet, frames and tags, border and edge dies, bunting dies, and then here again I've got flower and nature, topper dies, birthday dies, animals, whimsical, and shapes. Shapes should probably go behind here actually, so I may well move that. So again, it's pretty basic, but it works really, really well for me. And I've got them all in that one area. And I know that there's no coordinating dies here. So these dies are all on their own. Anything that coordinates with a stamp is behind the stamps, you know, in those tubs that I showed you before. All the same dividers, the same size pockets, and labelled exactly the same way. You can see there's one of them there. So that's it. It's once it took me a while to do the initial changeover from having lots of stuff in its own packaging, in its own cases. It did take me a while, but now I have it in this system. It's so easy. As soon as I buy something, I take all of the original packaging off. Do keep some of the packaging if it's got directions on, or just maybe like a step on how you should cut like a layered uh, die set, for example. Then I will keep that and pop it in the same pocket. And then I just grab my labeler pop the label on. I have all of these stored, all these spare pockets and spare sheets. I actually buy the magnetic sheets as an A4 size and then I cut it in half on my guillotine. Again, I think that works out cheaper. I'll share the links to the ones that I buy again in the description box, but do shop around, you know, um, you may well be able to get them somewhere else that you might know of a bit cheaper. Again, those same size tubs. It's just, for me, it's just, I need stuff organized. I need to be able to see it also. And, um, I just want everything in in the same size. I want to be able to, you know, know when I'm going to take some circle dies. That's all my circle dies there. There's none anywhere else. Same with my kind of themed dies and stuff. So anyway, I'm probably rambling on. That's pretty much it. I'll link the categories, magnetic street sheets, the pockets, the labeler, the tubs, everything you see, I will let I will list in the description box below. This one's the one that I get asked about the most is how I store my stamps and dies, but do check out that other stamp storage setup video, whatever I've called it, because I do go in more detail with the labeler and everything for that one. And again, I'll list those pockets there as well. Some of you I know have already seen that one because you've been commenting recently. So yeah, there you have it. So that is how I store my stamps and dies. I've got a few more how I organize videos, probably maybe five more, and then I'm gonna be finishing with my craft room tour. So thanks for watching. I really do appreciate it and I'll be back again very soon. Bye.